Tape 8, Side B. You are now going to hear a story utilizing all the dynamic vocabulary you have just learned. You should plan to listen to the story three times. The first time, just follow the story and its characters. I will read the story at a casual pace so you can follow easily. Then, rewind to the beginning of the story and listen a second time. Once you know what the story is about, you will be better able to concentrate on the context, how, where, and in what situation the word is used. The third time you listen to the story, be prepared to read along in your workbook. Then complete the exercise in your workbook that corresponds to this story by filling in the blank spaces with either the actual word or one of its synonyms. Ready? Let's begin. This story is entitled, Words. I learned many new words reading what people wrote and said about Leah's father in the papers and at family gatherings. Leah was my cousin. Her father was the brother of my father. When Uncle Joshua left the university for the political campaign, he received accolades for the books he wrote and was acclaimed as a political prodigy, a paragon of political aplomb, and a harbinger of a new diplomacy by critics. I learned still more new words from my grandfather. He would read what the papers said about his son and then compose his own big words. Diplomatic bravura, my grandfather would read from the newspaper. I'd call it diplomatic pomposity, diplomatic bravado, diplomatic bathos. His voice would rise angrily with each big word. Grandpa hated government on principle, and when his son had the effrontery to enter politics, the old man had declared him a pariah. Looking back on the two belligerents, I now see why they were on a collision course. Grandfather had the hubris of a self-educated man, and Joshua had the pomposity of a successful man. Altercations were frequent and normal in my family, and so no one viewed my uncle's transition from professor to political figure with special trepidation. But whereas before the adults and even the children regarded grandfather's harangues as an amusing eccentricity, knowing that his munificence in deed was evenly matched with his malignity in word, my uncle underwent a puzzling change. Grandfather became to him the symbol and archetype of all the recalcitrant voters he needed to convert. His personal and political vindication depended on it. The whole family would be at the dinner table. Uncle Joshua would walk in after a long day campaigning. Grandfather would casually remark, Politicians, Sybarites who surround themselves with sycophants. My grandfather always dispatched his homilies with levity, as if undergoing a refreshing little catharsis. But now, instead of rolling his eyes like in the old days, my uncle responded with outraged alacrity. Local politicians make a pittance. Instead of nasty innuendos, why don't you defend your absurd vendetta with facts for once in your life? Politicians are a scourge on all decent folk. Robbery, rapine, a travesty of justice. They belong in pillories, my grandfather continued, disdainfully ignoring my uncle's challenge. Why do I even deign to talk to you, you decrepit old sadist? Joshua would rage. He would hoist Leia out of her chair and into his arms with one sweeping gesture and stomp out of the house. The nadir of this period came when Leia stopped talking. She wouldn't say a word to her father or grandfather. During this time we played jacks incessantly, sitting on the sidewalk in the hot sun or cool evening air. Leia uttered those words which were necessary to the game, but little else. The only speech I could ferret out of her about the carnage that enveloped our family was, I hate them both. Leia's malaise had its effect, and father and son developed compunction and even a measure of comedy in their dealings with each other. The subject of politics became a faux pas at family gatherings. Although Uncle Joshua's encomium continued unabated for many years, the political leviathan and interloper that had disrupted our young lives never surfaced again. After you have listened to this story twice, continue the audio portion of the tape to finalize your mastery of these words. Listen and repeat each of the following words and their synonyms. Acclaim Cheer Rave Tribute Accolade Honor Commendation 
distinction. Alacrity. Hustle. Swiftness. Dispatch. Altercation. Disagreement. Discord. Dissension. Aplomb. Poise. Composure. Presence. Archetype. Prototype. Standard. Forerunner. Bathos. Anticlimax. Letdown. Triteness. Belligerent. Militant. Combative. Fighting. Bravado. Boasting. Ostentatious. Pomposity. Bravura. Accomplishment. Achievement. Virtuoso. Carnage. Massacre. Slaughter. Pogrom. Catharsis. Purging. Cleansing. Purification. Comedy. Kindness. Respect. Consideration. Compunction. Remorse. Sorrow. Misgiving. Decrepitude. Disability. Decay. Senility. Danes. Patronize. Vouchsafe. Stoop. Disdain. Ridicule. Mockery. Derision. Dispatch. Dismiss. Transmit. Execute. Affrontery. Audacity. Rudeness. Arrogance. Encomium. Tribute. Rave. Plot it. Faux pas. Mistake. Foul up. Indiscretion. Ferret. Detect. Discover. Uncover. Harangue. Scolding. Reprimand. 
lecture. Harbinger, announcer, messenger, prophet, homily, sermon, pronouncement, speech, hubris. Vanity, arrogance, brashness, innuendo, suggestion, implication, illusion, interloper, meddler. Trespasser, busybody, Leviathan, Goliath, Promethean, Colossal, Levity, Amusement, Merriment, Hilarity, malaise, apathy, depression, ennui, munificence, goodness, kindness, Humanity, Nadir, Down Cycle, Rock Bottom, The Pits, Paragon, Ideal, Standard. Epitome Pariah Outsider Exile Outlaw Pillories Shackles Chains Irons Pittance, trifle, small allowance, modicum, pomposity, arrogance, pretension, pride, prodigy. Wonder, genius, wizard, rapin, pillage, plundering, robbery, recalcitrant, rigid. Rebellious, defiant, sadist, Marquis de Sade, Torquemada, torturer, scourge, blight. Plague, pestilence, sybarite, hedonist, 
libertine, debaucher, sycophant, follower, parasite, flunky, travesty, farce, mockery, distortion, trepidation, fear, alarm, apprehension, vendetta, hostilities, antagonism, enmity, and vindication, basis, justification, exoneration, Now you will learn how to unlock the meanings of words by acquiring root word keys derived from Latin and Greek. From the common to the extraordinary, root words will permit you to easily decode thousands of words in the English language. Let's proceed. The root EU, E-U, means good, well, or pleasant. Association. Picture a good wishing well and a sign that reads, Wishing you well. You, E-U, means good, well, pleasant. Eulogize, to write or speak in praise of a person or thing. Abraham Lincoln is eulogized to this day. Euphemism, a mild expression substituted for one that is too harsh or blunt. The expression, he passed away, is a euphemism for he died. Euphony, pleasantness of sounds. That song is enjoyed for its euphony as much as its content. Euphoria, a feeling of general well-being. He was filled with euphoria after the birth of his daughter. You, E-U, good, well, pleasant. The root word, Benny, bon, B-E-N-E, bon, B-O-N, means well, good. Association. Ben is eating bonbons that taste good. Benny, bon, means well, good. Benefactor, person who gives financial or other help. The benefactor was generous to the school. Beneficence, an act of kindness. The survivors needed the church's beneficence. Benevolent. Wishing to do good for others. His benevolent manner endeared him to his students. Benignant. Kindly. The doctor always greeted the children with a benignant smile. Benny, B-E-N-E, bon, means well or good. The root laud, L-A-U-D, means praise. Association. He praised him loudly. Laud. Praise. Cum laud. Means with academic distinction. His parents were overjoyed when he graduated cum laud. Laud. L-A-U-D. To praise. The critics lauded the performers for a sterling performance. Laudable, praiseworthy. Generosity and humility are laudable qualities. 
laudatory, praising. The teacher's laudatory evaluation helped the student get accepted to Yale. Laud means praise. Gnosi or cognos, G-N-O-S-I or C-O-G-N-O-S-C -O -O means to know. Association. Only the gnose gnos. Gnosi or cognos. No. Agnostic. One who believes that nothing can be known about the existence of God. She would not claim that God did not exist. She would only say she was agnostic. Cognizant. Having knowledge. Aware. The group was cognizant of her presence. Incognito. In meaning not. With one's identity kept secret so no one will know who he is. The incognito movie star was not recognized. Prognosis. Forecast of the course of a disease. The doctor's prognosis proved correct. Gnosi or cognosc to know. The root sci, S-C-I, means to know. She sighed and said no. Sigh, S-E-I, to know. Prescient means foreknowledge. Her momentary prescience may have saved their lives. Science, branch of knowledge requiring systematic study and method. He was excited by the prospect of learning a new science. Scintilla, a trace. You have not produced a scintilla of evidence to support your argument. Scintillate, to sparkle, to be brilliant. I enjoy her dinner parties because the food is excellent and the conversation scintillates. Sigh means no. Let's review these root words. You, E-U, means well, good, pleasant. Benny, bon, means well or good. Laud means to praise. Gnosi or cognosc means to know. Psi means to know. The root ver, very, V-E-R-V-E-R-I, means true, genuine. Association. This is true, genuine fur. It's very true. Ver, V-E-R, very. True, genuine. Veracity means truthful. No one has questioned the veracity of his statement. Verisimilitude, an appearance of being true or similar to the truth. The period piece was remarkable for its verisimilitude. Veritable means real, rightly named. She was a veritable whiz at math. Verity, the truth of something. He tried to determine the verity of her story. Ver, very, means true, genuine. The root fid, F-I-D, means trust, faith. Association. You must have faith and trust in our fed. Fid. F-I-D. Trust. Faith.
bona fide. Bona meaning good, genuine, without fraud. It was a bona fide Tiffany lamp. Fiduciary, a trustee. He was given the fiduciary responsibility of collecting money for the present. Infidelity, in meaning not. Unfaithfulness. He was shocked to learn the degree of infidelity rampant in America today. Perfidious. Per meaning through. Somebody who literally is treacherous or disloyal, who goes right through your faith. Your perfidious gossip is malicious, delicious, and dangerous. Fid. Trust. Faith. The root Jud, J U D, or Judas, J U D I C, means judge, lawyer. Association. The judge said to Judas, You need a lawyer. Jud, Judas, means judge, lawyer. Abjudicate. Ab meaning against. To reject the case, throw it out of court. Your Honor, I propose that you abjudicate and save the taxpayers' money. Injudicious, in meaning not, showing lack of good judgment. He complained to her about her injudicious use of time. Judicate, the administration of justice. The police commission was set up to judicate complaints against the police department. Judicious. Judging wisely. With judicious planning, he completed the assignment with plenty of time to spare. Jude, J U D, Judas, meaning judge, lawyer. The root sof, S O P H means wisdom. Association. Your wisdom in choosing this sofa is great. Sof, S-O-P-H, means wisdom. Philosopher. Phil, meaning lover. An expert in the basic truths of the universe. Someone who loves wisdom. The philosopher remained unconcerned about the matters relating to day-to-day -day living. Sophism, a false argument, intended to deceive. The debater's skill at sophism prevailed, and they won the match. Sophist, a person who quibbles or argues. I wish you would be less a sophist and more an optimist. Sophomore. Intellectually pretentious and overconfident. Someone who believes they have wisdom. The sophomore thought he knew more than he actually did. Soph, S-O-P-H, means wisdom. The root, voc, V-O-C, voc, V-O-K, means call or voice. Association. Use your voice to call your vokes. Voke. Voc. Call. Voice. Avocation. A meaning not or without. A minor occupation. Not the thing you use your voice for or your calling all the time. His avocation evolved into a successful business. Evocative. E meaning out. Tending to call up or produce feelings or memories. To literally to call out. The evocative smells reminded me of Christmas. Irrevocable. Ear meaning not. Something that's not callable. Final and unable to be recalled. She regretted her irrevocable angry words. Vociferous. Making a great outcry. 
The vociferous customer drew stares from all the other shoppers. Voke, vak, means call or voice. Now let's review these root words. Ver, very, means true, genuine. Fid means trust, faith. Judd, Judas, J-U-D, J-U-D-I-C, means judge, lawyer. Sof, S-O-P-H, means wisdom. And Vok, Vok, V-O-K, V-O-C, means call, voice. This concludes Tape 8, Side B. Before continuing, please complete the review in your Vocabulary Dynamics Workbook. Thereafter, continue with Tape 9, Side A.